If you have been following this channel for some time, you might have noticed that I like to add a sort of uh, filmic look to my footage. Now, usually I just slap the native 8mm effect inside of Final Cut Pro into my clips, then maybe tweak it a little and that's it. But there is a better and more sophisticated method that can give you better results. And that's what I want to talk about in this video. A quick note before we start, this is not a sponsored video. The folks from Dehancer reached out to me and asked if I could make an honest review and I said yes. With that being said, if you decide to purchase the plugin and use my code ANALOG22, it will give you a 10% discount and give me a commission from the sale, which in turn will help me shoot more film and more content for this channel. Now let's begin. Dehancer Pro is currently available for Adobe After Effects, Premiere, DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro 10, which is what I'm using. The plugin is also available for photo editing software such as Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One and Affinity. I will be focusing on Final Cut Pro since that's the software that I'm using the most. So what makes a film look and why would you want to use it? Well to me personally the look of film represents something nostalgic and something more tangible than the digital look. Or as many like to say, film has character. Modern cameras can produce an image that is almost too clean and too perfect. To recreate the film look without using film, we need to introduce some imperfections to the image or dehance it. And that's exactly what Dehancer is doing. Once you download and install the plugin, I highly recommend reading the official documentation provided as it will give you a better understanding of each individual feature than if you just go and push the sliders to see what they're doing. This is especially advisable if you are not familiar with the film characteristics and terms. Now let's take a closer look at the individual features and what they do. According to the official documentation, the film profiles are heart and soul of Dehancer. Each film is accurately sampled with all of its characteristics. Now I'm sure the folks over there know what they are doing, but as someone who has been shooting film for a while, I did not really see my favorite film's characteristics translated into the profiles. A perfect example of this would be everybody's favorite Cinestill 800T, or better yet, Kodak 500T, which is basically the same film. This is a tungsten balanced film, yet when you apply the profile to your image, it doesn't really match the result that I'm used to from shooting Cinestill and uh, gives you sort of a magenta tone instead. This can be tweaked more to your liking with the various tools inside the plugin and with other FCP tools, but it is something to mention and one of the things where I think there is room for improvement. Now currently there is 63 film profiles inside Dehancer, but they are being constantly updated and edited, so keep an eye on that. Let's make one thing clear, grain is not noise. Whereas with digital cameras we look at noise as something undesirable because it makes the image look unprofessional and unappealing, the film emulsion itself consists of grain which literally makes up the image. Similar to digital noise, the higher the ISO, the more pronounced the grain. However, it is the grain that gives film its character. You might find that by default the grain in Dehancer is very pronounced. You can adjust this with various tools like the size, amount and contrast of the grain. A quick tip, just changing the film type from the default negative to positive will reduce grain appearance significantly in most cases. This is also a feature that takes up a lot of the computing power since Dehancer does not simply apply an overlay over the footage but rather analyzes and reconstructs the image so that it consists of grain. Another trademark of film images, one that is especially pronounced on Cinestill 800T, which actually has the anti-halation layer removed from it. By definition, halation is the spread of light beyond its proper boundaries, or to say it simpler, the red and orange halos around objects, especially light sources. It can also add a sort of warm glow to the skin tones. As with any effect inside Dehancer, you can go completely over the top or keep it subtle. An effect very similar to using a mist filter. True to its name, it makes the lights bloom, so to say, but also softens the image overall and works very well in combination with the halation effect. 
This is a lens imperfection which I believe we are all familiar with, so I am not going to spend much time explaining it. Just know that similar to Photoshop you can make it darker or brighter, and you can also use it to your advantage if you want to focus on the subject. This effect introduces slight color variations and exposure bumps to individual frames as can happen with film due to imperfections caused by the shutter or uneven mix of chemicals during the development process. Another imperfection unique to film, the image jumps slightly as it is being spooled inside the camera or projector. Personally, I don't see myself using these last two features very often, but it's nice to have them. False color is one of the best ways to see accurately and set your exposure. This is the only feature that you can download for free from the website, so go ahead and try it. When it comes to photo editing, so far I have only tried it with Photoshop, where upon installing the plugin you can find it in filters and you get all the bells and whistles applicable to photos. So what is my opinion? I think this is a very powerful plugin and it does what it's supposed to do, which is to emulate the film look. But since this is an honest review, I would like to mention some things that I believe could be improved. First, the film profiles. I have already mentioned that some of them don't seem as accurate as they could be, and from what I'm hearing, I am not the only one thinking so. Which makes me hopeful that the creators of the plugin will work on this. Another thing to mention is the processing power. This plugin can be very taxing on your computer. I'm saying this sitting behind an M1 Max MacBook Pro 16 with 32 gigs of RAM and 32 graphic cores. Despite that, I find it very difficult to work with the plugin, especially with the render option on. The manual does mention some tips to alleviate this problem, however, I did not find them to give me much of a relief. Next, I want to talk about the price. Now, the full version is $399 without tax, which is more than Final Cut Pro itself and more than DaVinci Resolve, which the light version you can actually get for free. The light version of Dehancer, which is missing some features like the halation, is $199 and the photo plugin comes in at $199 as well. You can get the false color feature for free, as mentioned before, and of course there is a 30-day trial if you are not sure about the purchase. Because of the price, I think this plugin is aimed and more suitable for professionals and production companies than hobbyists. However, as mentioned before, if you do want to buy the plugin, I have a 10% discount for you. Just type in my code analog22 before you check out. And finally, suggestions. Now these are not pros or cons, but rather features that I would like to see inside the plugin, like letterboxing, dust, scratches, light leaks, leaders, and anamorphic look. All of these can be downloaded from the internet, some of them even for free, and the letterboxing is in Final Cut itself, but it would be nice to have all of these features packed inside the plugin as one go-to place for the film look. I hope you found this video useful, thanks for watching and feel free to share your opinion in the comments.